Hey, how's it going? I want to show you uh, some images of some anamorphic chalk drawings. Take a look at the first one here. Uh, pretty cool, pretty interesting. We got a frog, it looks like it's hopping off of the street. And there's a fly here, and it looks like little boys flying on the back of the fly. Oh, cool, how neat is that? Uh, all of this is achieved through a mathematic process uh, in order to create an optical illusion. Um, what the artists do is they use a grid drawing um, reference, uh, which I'll explain and show you a little bit more later. Um, but pretty cool optical illusion here. Here's another one. A uh, guy, it looks like he's holding the word, the W on the word world. And you're going to notice this girl looks like she's sitting on top of the W. Uh, in reality, she's really, really far away. And she's laying down on top of the chalk drawing. But the optical illusion makes it her appear to be tiny and sitting on that W. Here we got another one that's pretty neat. Uh, looks like cities underneath the ground. Really like the texture they created on the broken ground here. Pretty cool stuff. And then we got Jaws coming out of a, looks like a brick ground. Looks like he's chewing on some bricks there. Uh, again, optical illusion. If you look at the tip of his nose, it's way back by this guy that's in the distance. So again, we're, we're working with optical illusions. Pull up a website that I found here. Um, massive Lego Army 3D Street Art. Um, pretty neat looking. Here's a different view of the actual drawing that's on the ground. So the way that anamorphic drawings work is you have to have a certain camera view or video view and a certain angle of the drawing in order for it to appear that it's popping up out of the, the ground. Here's them in process where they're actually drawing it. You're going to notice you see the grid, grid squares all back here. Um, that's how they can create something so massive in size yet draw step by step. Another view of them working, adding the paint slash chalk to the drawing. And they said they got their idea from the Terracotta Soldiers, which is in Xi'an, China. Artist sketch the idea. And there he is all hot and sweaty in the sun, painting the color onto the Lego mural. So how do you do this? What I'm going to show you is how to use Photoshop to create an anamorphic grid drawing. So I'll open Photoshop here. I'm going to go to File and New. And I want this to be 250 pixels by 250 pixels white background and we click OK. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to select all. I'm going to go to edit and down to stroke and I'm going to be five pixels center 100%. That's good and I click OK and it puts a black box around there. Go select, deselect and now I'm going to go to edit and define pattern and we're going to call it pattern 2. That's good next step is we're going to open a new document and this one is going to be 2500 pixels by 3500 pixels and that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and separate these two. On this one I'm going to go ahead and copy my layer here and just drag it down and hide the bottom layer. Okay. We're going to go up to edit and we're going to go to fill and we're going to use the pattern that we created. Click OK. And there is a grid. All right. We don't need file number one anymore, so we can delete that and don't save it. So this is going to be the basis for our anamorphic drawing. I'm going to go ahead and take this layer here, the background copy, and I'm going to drag it down to a new layer to make it, to basically copy it. Um, I can now go to Edit and Transform. And we're going to scale this grid down to about, I don't know, a third of the way to the bottom. Go ahead and click my check mark here. I'm going to go to Edit and Transform again. And then I'm going to go to Perspective. And I want to pull from the right little bar here. I'm going to drag that in there. So you can kind of see that this is 
uh, forming a grid that's going back into the distance. And that's what we want. This is how we can get that anamorphic effect. The next step is I need to uh, find an image that I can put on top of this perspective grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a shoe because uh, we want to make a shoe that looks like it's standing up off the table or off the ground. So if I go to Internet Explorer here, um, Jordan 4's white, red, black. I like Jordan 4's. We want to we want to pick a shoe that's got some interest to it, some colors, a lot of different patches, you know, a lot of different areas that we can work with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one. I'm going to drag it out here to the desktop and I don't need the internet anymore. The next step is we want to go back into Photoshop and I'm going to go to File and Open. We want to be able to open our shoe that we copied. We want to open that in Photoshop. So here it is. It's a new file. What we have to do here is um, we have to take and we're trying to cut the background, all this white area, out of the shoe so that way when we drag it over into our Photoshop document we can still see our grid squares. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down to a new layer, hide the background layer, little eyeball there, and I'm going to use the um, this tool here. It's uh, called a magnetic lasso tool. And now we should be able to. And as I'm going along, I'm clicking every once in a while. I want to make sure that I can get this shoe cut out as accurately as I can. So I'm trying to go along the red here, and the black. And if you have a really stark contrast, like the difference between the black and the white background here, it should go by itself. However, where there's white meeting white, you're going to have to click and sort of draw that imaginary line there of where the shoe and the background meet. I'm going to go ahead and put this shadow in there go along here and now it's getting a little difficult but I'm trying to maintain the shape of the shoe you can see it's getting a little fidgety here if you have a lighter or a darker color shoe this will be a little bit easier I'm just trying to make up where the shoelaces are And as we go through here, it should select it. Okay, so I've got the whole entire shoe selected. So what I'm going to do is go to Select and Inverse, and it's going to select the background now. I can hit Delete on the keyboard, and that background is now deleted. I'm going to go up to Select and Deselect, and now I have a shoe with no background, which is what we want. I'm going to go over here and grab my Move tool. And I'm going to slide this over onto the other document. You can see my shoe has appeared here uh, on this perspective grid. I'm going to drag it towards the bottom. And I'm going to hold shift and drag from the corner to enlarge this shoe. And again, I want it to just fit on the perspective grid. Okay. So we want to make it so that it stays that size and fits just within that area. I'm going to go click my check mark, check mark and there we have the shoe on top of the perspective grid. So this is the fun part. Um, basically what I want to do is I want to select the shoe layer and the perspective grid layer and to do that I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the background or the perspective grid layer and the shoe layer. That selects both of them at the same time. I'm going to drag this up to the top. I'm going to click my check mark. And now I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and I'm going to go to Perspective. And if I can stretch this out a little bit, I want to grab on the left side here, I'm going to pull it to the left. And we're trying to line our grids up as best as we can. You see that? So my grid's lining up check mark there. I think it needs to move up just a little bit. Check. That is what the 
shoe looks like uh, in order to create an anamorphous, anamorphic drawing. Um, so we're going to do a grid drawing of this and um, once the grid drawing is complete you'll be able to use a camera or, or a, a video camera or a cell phone um, to view the anamorphic drawing from a uh, perspective where it looks like the shoe is actually popping off of the table. I'm going to go ahead and go to image and image size and I want to make this image uh, 8 inches now we will say uh, I'm going to make it 10 inches tall so height 10 inches and go ahead and click OK. Basically what that's going to do is when I go up to file and print it's going to make it so that it fits on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So I can go ahead and um, find my printer and click print. It should print out. Alright, so here's my printout and as you can see uh, the grid lines don't go over top of the reference image. So I'm going to take a sharpie and a ruler and I'm going to go ahead and continue the grid lines across the image. And this is going to be very beneficial when you go to do the grid drawing. This is an actual time, believe it or not. I'm just this fast at drawing lines. Boom, there you go. Alright, so here's the finished version of my anamorphic shoe. Um, and for this portion of the video, I want to talk about color. Um, we're going to try to do this in a non-traditional sense. Um, and what I mean by that is black isn't just black and white just isn't white. Um, so if I zoom in here on the shoe and I'm looking at the black part, I actually put a navy blue down, colored pencil down first, and then I layered black on top of that. Kind of gives it a richer color. In the white area, I shaded gray, and then I added some purple to the gray to give it kind of, help make it pop. And then here in the red area, I used orange and red, and then I added some purple uh, to the shadow areas just to give it kind of a darker look. Um, I like to consider this big kid drawing, or big kid coloring I should say. Makes your uh, colors kind of pop off the, the page and appear a little bit more realistic. Okay, so what I have here are some circles. I just want to talk about color pencil technique. Uh, first of all, you want to make sure that your pencils are sharp. Uh, I like to use the scrumbling, scumbling method. Uh, of applying the pencil. Um, just kind of gives it a little smoother look, less overlap. Um, again, I'm, I have about medium pressure here. I'm laying a blue-violet down right now. Um, for the next one here, I'm going to go ahead and put a navy blue. Again, using the scumbling technique, just trying to get a nice, smooth, even layer. Uh, I don't want this to be waxy. Uh, waxy is very difficult. It's a difficult way of coloring with colored pencils. Uh, so again, we're just going to go try to go about medium pressure so it's nice and smooth. Again, this is waxy. It's hard to layer over that. So that is bad. I'm showing you these colors um, just to show you how I developed my black and how I added some shading to like the reds of the shoe and the, and the grays of the shoe. Um, sometimes it's just kind of nice to see the, the pencil in action. So we're going to do a little green layer here. Uh, next one we'll do a red. Hurry up, Mr. Longley. And the last one here we'll do um, gray. I'm hoping that you can kind of relate this to the previous image of the shoe. Um, so it kind of helps you understand how I layered the colors to, to achieve that look.
So as I said before, I've got my purple and my blue here. I'm going to go ahead and take a black and layer black over this just so you can see how rich of a black you can get by layering it over top of another color. It also gives it kind of a different look as well. Almost appears to be kind of a shade of purple. Um, if I do it over the navy blue, again layering black over the navy blue right now, it still appears to be a black value or a black color, but it's more of a shade of the color that's underneath it. Again, if this is just black, if I'm putting medium pressure on uh, just the white surface, you know, it's hard to get that rich black color without getting waxy. So that's why we're layering black over colors. Uh, another option you have is you can do what's called complementary shading. So I'm taking green and I'm adding its complement, which is red. And I'm just putting a light layer on there. Um, when you mix complementary colors, it creates sort of a neutral brown color. Um, so sometimes when you want to neutralize a color, if it's too bright, you can add its complement. And on the red here, um, it's kind of a reddish orange color. I'm using a blue violet. Again, it's kind of a complementary color. Um, I'm going to add the sh shadow or shading with its complement here. And it's kind of like I did with the uh, base of the red part of the shoe, my example. Just a different way of coloring, different way of applying color. Um, gives you some cool results. And then the last one uh, on the, the gray circle, um, I'm going to take a little bit of purple and just faintly kind of add a shadow or a shade there. You can see the circle still appears that it's white, um, you know, with some shading on it. So it's not purple and gray and white, it's, it just appears that it's white. Uh, in this example here, I'm just showing you what the normal colors would look like underneath there. So we've got black by itself. Um, there's red, orange kind of by itself, green by itself. So you can see the difference in the color, the richness of the color. Again, we don't want a color waxy. Um, that is bad. If you'd like to try to, you know, richen your colors up without getting waxy, uh, you can always take the colors that you used and go back in. So, for instance, on here I can take my blue-violet and go back in and add some more. Again, I'm using medium pressure, um, not pressing too hard. And if I wanted to, I could go back in more and add more black over top of that just to make the color richer. But we don't want to get waxy. So in this circle I'm adding some more navy blue um, just to make it somewhat richer in color. So it builds more contrast with the paper, the white of the paper. Big Kid Coloring. Ooh, let me come down this way. Oh. oh my gosh, the shoe is standing up on the table. It's incredible.